Guys, most of you who follow me will know that I've had numerous shoulder problems over the years. And one of the main things with having so many shoulder problems is just the trainer or coach that I am, I've gone away and researched and researched and researched and ended up, to be honest, formulating the way in which I look at any form of shoulder injuries. Now, the first thing that we got to look at is the most common word, which is called the rotator cuff. And it's a selection of muscles that lie within and around the shoulder joint and around the scapula. So we've got the teres minor, we've got infraspinatus, subscapula, subscapularis, and supraspinatus. And every time somebody gets this, um, any form of shoulder injury, the first thing that is zoned in, in on is which part of the rotator cuff muscle have you potentially strained? And immediately it's a trip to the physio. Immediately it's a trip to anybody that you see from a therapy perspective. And the common advice after a little bit of treatment is let's work the external rotators. Let's actually do this form of external rotation commonly because a lot of the problems have been caused by some kind of uh, bench press or whether it's reaching, getting a suitcase, or you name it. So we have a problem at the rotator cuff. And so treatment and treatment and treatment. And I've noticed over the years that the treatment does very minimal. Okay, we've got an injury. So we create some level through tissue release or some level of soft tissue work, a little bit of inflammation which encourages and facilitates the repair process of that area. Now let's look at this. And this is something that I go at length with the rotator cuff. If somebody is in this flexed or rounded, kyphotic as we call it, posture, and they have a shortening of the pec muscles, pec minor, there's some shortening of the upper trap muscles which join over to the front and the clavicle here. Most people in day-to-day -day life, and people that train, unless I work with them, have poor thoracic mobility, or my team work with them, should I say. So when you want to see a physio because you've got some level of problem with the rotator cuff, and they treat it, and then they tell you to do rotation, your ability to externally rotate your arm with the band that they give you is that. Now, if I then put you in an extended thoracic position with a slight level of retraction to ideal posture, look at the external rotation that I actually do get. So we've got to consider when you're doing the band at home or whether you're optimally getting a level of external rotation. That's number one. So I questioned over and over again was, you get a lot of treatment, you do the band work, which is not training the muscle through its full range of movement, but most importantly, the reason why you've been injured in the first place, which is why no physios really look at, the reason you've been injured in the first place is due to poor ability to extend the thoracic, poor stability, very, very, very tight or overactive in all the muscles that come in towards the sternum and in towards the clavicle. Therefore, everything that depresses the shoulder blades, retracts the shoulder blades and maintains a level of thoracic extension are never really brought into the equation when we talk about rehab. But they need to be because you often, when you have rotator cuff damage from an, like a a, a pull or an external rotation position is basically due to the scapula not being able to rotate and your humeral joint being forced without any level of scapula support with it. So what we've now got to do is say to ourselves, well, if we have more optimal scapular range of movement with a thoracic extended position, we need to train the lower traps. We need to train the muscles that extend the spine and therefore, we will be able to get the shoulder blades back, extend, train the muscles that stabilize the, 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 uh, between the shoulder blades and, and the thoracic. When somebody's in a thoracically extended position and they bench press, as you come back, you're not seeing any rotation. What happens to most guys? When you get a rotator cuff problem, you're flexed over, you bench press, you get internal rotation, and then we have the rotator cuff strains, okay? So then when we extend and we have depressed shoulder blades, stable scapula, as we extend it and depress in a, in a, in a bench press, we, we get optimal lengthening of the pec, stabilization from the, everything around the back of the shoulder girdle, and we don't compromise or damage the rotator cuff. 
And so what I do with everybody that we train is I, I never put this rotation exercise into any programs that I write. All my clients have stable shoulders. All my shoulders have optimally functioning shoulders and they're not in pain. Very, 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 very rarely does somebody ever have to go and see a physiotherapist to work on any form of rehab. But people are coming to us with loads of shoulder problems from doing dysfunctional work over the years. So the main thing that I want you to take away from this is you've got rotator cuff problems because of something that you did. You then, to fix it, don't need just to work on external rotation. You need to work on everything that allows you to externally rotate better through day-to-day -day function. If you go and pick something like a case out of a rack and you twist here and you can't get optimal external rotation with the scapula mobilization around the back of the rib cage and you have no stability, then yes, you're going to pull something. Yeah? If you've got minimal rotation at the hip and you twist, you're going to pull something at the hip. So we've got to look at stability around the joint, strength around the joint, specifically thoracic extension, lower trap work, everything I've talked about in my previous YouTube videos when it comes to looking at the rotator cuff muscles. You don't need to make the rotator cuff stronger because when you get into external rotation and you press from a stable position, everything is getting trained and everything is being taught to be a lot more functional. So you won't see me rehabbing and giving people external rotation. I actually try and facilitate a better position to be optimal in function and therefore you don't need that direct work on the rotator cuff. So to me, focusing on di direct rotator cuff strength it's a thing of the past. Having gone through so much over the last 15 years of discussions from different people, I don't have problems with my clients that come to see me. Sometimes the odd release, but it's all down to a lot of the scapula stability, a lot of in, um, poor mobility around the thoracic as well. So look over the previous videos, put all this together, and say goodbye to rotator cuff pain.